In today's video, we are going to show you how to clean a rusty motorcycle tank and seal it. I do suggest that you watch the whole video. Don't just pause it and then go to the next step because there is vital parts that's important to it. We have this R1 tank that's in pretty good shape. It has a couple scratches on it, but we could touch those up pretty good. It's just really dusty and it's been sitting for a while, but I think after we clean it up, it should look really nice. The only problem is we got to, uh, it's, it's rusted inside pretty bad. All right, as you can see, she don't look too good. She's pretty bad, but this is gonna be good to see how it looks when we're finished with it. Pretty sure we can clean this up relatively easy for the most part. All right, so we just got out of Walmart. We got our five gallons of vinegar, two gallons of of distilled water, baking soda, a hair dryer to dry out the tank. The most expensive thing was like this, the strainer. This was like 20 and this was like 10 and that was like a couple bucks, but the distilled water was like dollar a piece and then one gallon of vinegar was like, like 250 or something like that. So not bad. All right, we got the power washer hooked up. Uh, as you can see, it's the middle of winter and it's, it's like 45 degrees today. So I'm taking advantage of the weather. Uh, so basically I got the, uh, I got the gas tank sitting in here so we can kind of hold it in place while I'm power washing it so it's not flying all over the place, but yeah, you can see it's pretty bad. So, all right, so we'll start power washing. So here's just some of the rust. It's kind of hard to tell because a lot of the water rush, you know, washed it out. But you can see there was a lot of shit in there. We got a lot out just from power washing it. All right, so we finished rinsing it out. And look at that difference just from rinsing it out. Yeah, there's obviously still some rust in there, but compared to what it was, pretty awesome. So the vinegar should get rid of the rest of this rust. Now we're gonna use the uh, hair dryer. We'll do this for, you know, I'm gonna let this run for probably 15, 20 minutes. All right, so we finished with the hair dryer and the tank's obviously pretty hot. We'll just see what it's showing. It's showing like 130 degrees on the, you know, on the metal of the tanks. So there's a little bit of water left in the bottom of the tank even here after using the dryer and everything else. And the compressed air, so I'm going to use a shot back and try to get it out as much as possible. All right, so now that she's basically dry, we're going to use our white distilled vinegar. Uh, they're gallons. And then I'm going to fill this thing all the way to the brim, to the tippity top, and then we'll let that sit for at least a day or more, depending on how bad the rust really is. So something that I didn't do, I should have just filled this thing right from the get-go, because you could see on the side over there that it started rusting up and I should have just filled it right away. But either way, I'm not too concerned because the vinegar is gonna strip it out anyway. But yeah, like I said, something I would suggest is filling it all the way to the top with the vinegar right away after it's all dried. I just put one gallon in at first to see if it wasn't gonna drip and it wasn't barely dripping, but then once I added a little bit more vinegar, another gallon or two, it you know started to drip a little bit more consistently, so. The tank has been sitting with vinegar for about a week now. What I did after like three or four days was I emptied some of the vinegar into the five gallon bucket and I actually have one of these corks, which fit right into there. And it, it's a pretty smooth and snug fit, but it's not like 100%. Maybe if you put like, 
you know, saran wrap or something over here to make it a little bit better. But either way, um, I poured a little bit out just so that I could get some room in there. And I was shaking the can around left and right to really, you know, try to get any stuff out. And then I poured some more into the five gallon bucket and I kept repeating it till it was almost gone. Just wanted to see where the tank was. It was, it, all the rust is gone, but I had to wait till, you know, the next couple days because of winter weather. It was just too cold out and I couldn't use the hose. So today I am going to empty this out. Once it's emptied into the pail, then we are going to get uh, a gallon of distilled water and um, baking soda. It takes one cup of baking soda per gallon of distilled water. So I got two gallons of distilled water. I'm going to do the first gallon with the one cup of baking soda. Mix it really good. Put it into the tank. Swish it around a lot for a couple minutes. Empty it out. Then we get the second gallon. Same thing. Mix one cup of baking soda to the one gallon of distilled water. Put it back into the tank and swish it around to neutralize the acid. After that's done, I'm going to take the hose and keep washing the, uh, the tank out just to make sure everything is out of there. Once I'm done with that, I got to bring it into the garage. I'm going to dry it out with either a heat gun or a uh, hair dryer, whatever one you got, and uh, get all the water out. And then the second is dry, then I'm going to use a uh, Pour 15 tank and fuel, uh, fuel tank sealer. And the important thing is, is after you get this vinegar out, you have to do these steps very quickly because what will end up happening is if you don't do everything one after another and you let it sit, you're going to get um, flash rust and obviously we don't want that. So I'm not going to get it on video. It's like I said, I explain it because I, I don't want to, you know, take some time filming and then taking time in between each step. So as long as you follow those things, you should be good. I'll probably just show you a quick little uh, picture of it or a video after I empty the vinegar right away just so you can see how good it came out. As you can see, the tank came out really good. That's just vinegar that I need to pour out, but the tank has no more rust. So before you do anything, obviously make sure you have your uh, pour 15 all set, ready to go. You do not want to shake it after you pop all the cap, the cap open, you want to get something like a little stick and stir it. You don't want to shake it, you want to stir it a lot. So you make sure that's ready, leave the cap on until you're ready to actually use it. We have our heat gun here, we have a hair dryer, we have a wet, um, you know, a rag to basically soak up any of the water. I'm actually gonna have the tank, you know, standing like this with the thinner part towards the top and the thicker part towards the bottom so that the water will drain down to it. It will drop all the way down to the bottom and then I could just stick that in there to you know grab any excess water. And then like I said, that will be dry and then you gotta start using this stuff. You, like I said, you pop it open, you stir it up really good for a bit and then you pour it into the tank and then you have to keep moving the tank all different angles because you wanna coat the whole thing. And obviously, you know, you don't want to just pour it in there and let it go. You have to keep flipping the tank up and down to the left and the right, this side, that, every little angle so that you could see, you know, where it went and exactly what spots you missed to prevent any flash rust. So make sure you prep yourself and get ready before you start to empty out the vinegar. All right, so we neutralized the acid that was in the tank. We rinsed it out very thoroughly after using the neutralizer, which is the baking soda and distilled water. We dried it, and now we're going to put the pour 15 into the tank. All right, so we have the pour 15 in here, and you can kind of see it's a, almost looks like liquid metal or something like that. But what I did was I ended up taping, and I'm going to tape up this part so I could really get the... Uh, inside over here. It's basically coated, it looks like, but I really want to make sure that every part of this tank gets the coat on it, but I think we're going to be good now, guys. This is great. All right, so your tank is all sealed up. Now, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to roll it around slowly to get the liquid to 
to touch every part of the inside of the tank. Surprisingly, that little pint does definitely do a five gallon tank for sure. I didn't think it was going to, but you're gonna to wanna to spend a lot of time, you know, laying it down like this, turning it to the side a little bit, repeating, and you keep turning it around. And you wanna get every single part of the tank, so you're gonna to have to flip it upside down, etc. So you keep doing that, and it's going to seem like years doing it, but you really want to get it on every spot. So that's why I didn't cover up this hole at first, just so I could kind of see where it was going to make sure I coated, you know, all this part. And then I could focus on the bottom part for the uh, second half of the tank. All right, so here's the five gallons of vinegar. You can tell it looks pretty bad. I did buy a strainer initially because I was going to pour all the, you know, all the vinegar through it to try to catch the rust. But you know what? Who really cares? Don't waste the money on the strainer. That was just a waste of money. Um, whatever it is, what it is. But yeah, you can tell this is pretty darn mucky. Looks pretty bad. There's a lot of rust that came out. And the uh, distilled water with the baking soda I just emptied outside. I didn't get it on tape, but... You know, whatever, but that just shows you vinegar does a great job. All right, so we got the whole tank coated. So what I'm going to do is I'll take this off. I'm actually going to let it sit in there so that any excess can leak out. And then you're going to let this dry for, I don't know, at least five days. i got to look to see exactly what the instructions are. Maybe it's like 96 hours or something like that. But I'm going to probably let it dry for at least a week. And then once it's dry, you should just be able to put gas in it and you should be good to go. If you want, before you actually install it on the bike, maybe fill a little bit with gas just to slosh it around and just make sure anything gets out. And then you'll be good. You can see I still got little puddle right there inside which is good because it's still going around coating anything that I didn't get so yeah so we'll let this sit in there and let it drain and again this is just a little process that it takes a while but it's worth it it's going to save this tank which is awesome all right I basically got all of it there's just a little bit still dripping there so I'm gonna let this thing just stand straight up so that the rest will come down and it doesn't seem like an awful lot. So maybe I'll just leave it in there. But another thing I had to do was the cap. That's all duct tape. I got to get that shit off. But that part right inside there, that was all flash rusted because I didn't get the pour 15 on it first. So I just took Q-tip and then just brushed it inside there and it seems to be good now. Not worried about this other shit out of here because that's not on the inside of the gas tank, so. So the duct tape that I had on here left some pretty bad residue, you know, which was expected, but you can just use regular gas on a rag and just wipe it off and it takes it right off. So you don't really got to worry about that. But yes, yeah, so look at this tank. Way better than the other one. Way better. I'll show you the old one real quick. This is the old one. Fucking junk. It's amazing that something so cheap in price gets rid of rust like that. Yeah, so I'm really excited to get this back on the bike. But unfortunately, I gotta wait until it dries 100%. Alright guys, look at the inside of the gas thing. It's kind of cool how it dries and it's amazing. Looks like a brand new tank in there. So these are the results that you can get from this thing. I don't know why it's not focusing, but amazing. So some tips that I would say when you're doing this whole process is make sure you're wearing some disposable gloves because if you get the pore 15 on your skin and it dries, it is going to take a bit to get it off. Also make sure you're wearing crappy clothes because that's another thing. If you get it on your clothes, you don't want to worry about having to throw it out.
before you end up pouring out the vinegar, make sure you have your distilled water ready, or ready mixed with the baking soda as your neutralizer. It's very important that you make sure you thoroughly rinse out this tank. You wanna get everything that's any crud out there as much as possible. So another thing I would do is after I know that I've got all the uh, pour 15 on every part that it could on the inside to the best of my knowledge, I'm gonna let it drain all the way down to the bottom. Have this thing standing up while I'm doing it, just so to make sure that all the liquid could get to the bottom. And then after that, I would turn it around just like so and leave it just like that because what's gonna happen now is it's gonna do its last run and it's gonna go all the way down the coating of the tank and make a nice finish. Apparently this stuff is self-leveling from what I heard and lo and behold, it was nice and smooth. It's important to make sure that this thing fully dries. So while you're waiting those 96 hours, I'm gonna wait at least a week. I'm going to be using this uh, Meguiar's Ultimate Compound. We have a mother's polishing ball and just a simple drill. So putting it on your tank and if, where there's any scratches, you can really get rid of them for the most part, as long as it's not like finger deep where you could really feel it. But you could get a lot of the scratches out. There were some on here that looked pretty bad. I didn't think they were gonna come out and now you can't even see it. So very impressed with that stuff. And you might as well take your time while you're doing it because you don't have to wait those couple days for the uh, sealer to dry. All right guys, so hopefully this video was helpful. You guys can restore tanks that are rusted on the inside very easily. All you have to do is get the vinegar. I bought five gallons of the vinegar because the tank is almost five gallons capacity. So the 250 a piece, that was like what, uh, 1250? And then the sealer was like another 22 or something like that. The uh, hair dryer, we had to get one anyway, but that was only like 20 bucks. And if you have a little bit of baking soda, you're set. The still water is only a dollar a gallon, or you can just, you know, really boil water and let it get to a cool. And then you have your distilled water right there. So guys, don't fall to using those expensive stuff on the internet. I'm sure there is some stuff that works pretty good, like no rescue or the other stuff, but like it's 20 bucks. What is it for one gallon? And for basically, <laughs> You know a little bit more you can do it at home with the vinegar the vinegar does a great job i didn't scrub the tank at all i just let it sit in there and then i just swished it around and got it out there was no like hard labor doing it and it came out perfect